Hey guys, welcome back to All Mine Ranch. I'm your host, Ryan, and man, I got a, I'm starting a four-day weekend. I just got out of bed. I slept in till a whopping 7 a.m. It's Friday morning. I've got such a long to-do list, but I don't like to feel obligated. I like to feel mm, that everything I work on is optional. Lights, lights, lights. Here we go. Whoa. So... I've got so much to do, but I want to work on what feels good and fun, but I don't want to squander my four day weekend. So I'm out in my garage port. It's pretty chaotic in here. One of the things I'm going to work on is the ATV. So I got the front basket in. This guy is just sitting here, but before I can mount it, I want to take the rack underneath it, the metal rack off of here and spray paint it black. And I got to get the front tires, the new tires put on. They're in the back of my truck. So I just broke the bolts on this with my impact wrench. And I got to say, one of these Adobe impact wrenches, Adobe, Ryobi uh, impact wrenches uh, is a miracle worker. The bolts weren't tight, but man, it's just boom, boom, boom. All four lugs are, are broken. Anyway, so I just broke the lugs. Now I'm going to use that red bottle jack to jack it up, take the front wheels off, put them in the truck, drive into Bisbee, to a tire shop and get the front wheels put on. And I have a 10 a.m. meeting this morning, even though it's my day off. It took two days of PTO to make a four day weekend. But I'll share that for the first time in my life, I actually formally asked somebody, informally, formally, asked somebody or to be a mentor to me. Um, Cause I am trying to climb the corporate ladder so I can make as much money as I possibly can in my remaining few years. Normally, I wouldn't care enough <laughs> to really put in the effort, but for whatever reason I do, and maybe I look at it as a personal challenge, and I don't normally challenge myself too much um, in my corporate job. I try to do a damn good job and get recognition and paid for doing a damn good job, but I'm at a level now in my career where that doesn't work anymore. You really have to network and do certain things and sort of appear a certain way, unfortunately, in order to get promoted, to get that next big rung on the ladder. So I asked somebody to mentor me. We've got a meeting every two weeks on Fridays and it's today. And because, you know, this person is going out of their way to help me out, I'm going to, you know, hop on my work laptop and, you know, jump on a Zoom call here at 10 a.m. So I got about two and a half hours at this point before that call. Uh, it's just one of those things you got to do is kind of work a little bit or think about work on your day off, even though I don't really want to. Uh, but that's on my plate as well. Anyway, I'll take pictures and videos as I go, but I'm going to take the wheels off of this ATV and throw them in the back of the truck and maybe drive into Bisbee. And if since I'm doing that, I might also load up my truck with some trash and do my, you know, bi-weekly dump run to get rid of, you know, my household trash, which I have to take it into town because there is no trash service out here in the desert. So Stanley's trying to warn me that there is a cow to be chased off. Let's go see if, oh, he's over there. This isn't the best lens for it, but there's a cow and Stanley's running around. Let's see if he, he forgets to bark sometimes when barking is the most effective. There he goes. Yeah, cow, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, okay, there he goes. Stanley, just bark. Go get that cow. Get that cow. Get him. Get him. Ruff. Bark, you dumbass. That's what scares him. Bark. Okay, he goes ape shit. We're driving by cows on the road. They're not even on my land. He goes ape shit barking. And here we are wanting to chase one off of my land. And he's not even barking. So the cow's just looking at him like he's stupid. Stanley, get that cow out of here. Dog's not very bright. I've said it before, you guys think I'm wrong, but he's running circles around the cow thinking that's gonna do something, and clearly it's not. Crazy. All right, so I just took the racks off of the top of the bike. I had to do it quad. I had to do it in two pieces, so there's the racks that just came off of right here. So let me get down here. These are the broken mud guards. Oh, focus, I guess it's in focus on the rancher. 
These are the mud guards that I'm gonna replace. They're like splash guards where your feet go, right? So the front tire will throw dirt right up, you know, towards your feet. So these are broken off on both sides. So I've just ordered uh, used ones off eBay. They're actually hard to find. Although these fender, you know, the, the mud guards for the fenders are all over eBay, brand new, you know, China. There's a bunch of companies in China that make them for about 200 bucks a whole kit. The splash guards that go and protect your feet from the front wheel wells, those don't seem to be made by aftermarket manufacturers, even though they're extremely similar. So I found a pair in good shape used, but $90 plus 15 shipping on eBay. So I bid the minimum and it won. I was the only person bidding. So 105 bucks later, they're on their way. They should be here tomorrow. But since I have the wheels off of this thing to go get the tires onto it, I decided, well, I'm going to take the rack off. Anyway, since I got the bike assembled, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that. In another day or two, those splash guards should come in, and then the whole kit for the fender should come in, so I can do all of that with the wheels off. Then I'll put the wheels on, then I'm going to spray paint the racks right here so they look a little newer. I might even replace the headlights just because they're very cloudy, or at least maybe get a headlight you know, fixing kit to get rid of the fogginess on these lights. I don't know if you can see that very well, but you know, that's pretty, uh, pretty dingy. And I'd like to just clean up all this plastic and just make it a little refresh because it's been neglected for a couple of years, unfortunately. But overall, the bike's in, in good shape. I inspected everything under here. The tie rods are good. The bearings look good, you know, so it's pretty sound quad. And yeah, it's humid as shit out here. I'm sweating even though it's only 8 a.m. and I'm in the shade and I'm not doing super hard labor. Yeah, I'm sweating. It's gonna be one of those challenging weekends. Hey guys, all right, I spent about an hour in Bisbee. I got a lot done. I went to the hardware store, did some returns. Whoa. Went to the hardware store, did some returns, got some spray paint, um, picked up some mail, which has a bunch of ATV related things in it. Um, I got the tires on my wheels. Gonna put those back on after I do the mud guard things, but right now, just wanna do a little before and after. So here's the racks that I took off one, two, three metal racks and I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit get the dirt off of them put them on this board spray paint them then get under here spray paint that a little bit and the mudguard things uh, that I bought off eBay that you were used where'd they go these are the mudguard thingies so 115 bucks after shipping or 105 for these things um, but they're much better built than the ones that came for the fenders. Those arrived today and that's these things and they're very thin and flimsy. I mean, they'll work, but the quality isn't what I expected for 180 bucks plus tax. Uh, but I got most of the things that I need to put this back together, you know, to get it looking good. Let me uh, do some painting and some ATV work and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, man, we're making progress. Even though it's hot as hell, I just got on the left side, the driver's side, mud splash guard in the spender thing. I don't know if you can see like before where it's broken off. After. Not seeing the tire right through where that mud guard would be, that splash guard thing. So that all went on pretty well once I figured out the whole little plastic, you know, rivet things and how to get those in and out fairly quickly. Progress, man, progress. About another two hours and I'll be good to go. Hey, good morning, guys. It's Ryan from All Mine Ranch. All right, it's Saturday morning. Um, I'm in my workshop. I just got done slapping some tan paint on all these boards. This is for my solar rack. Here's a bunch more right here. So just listen to some old guy music and putting some paint on the uh, this wood. My goal today is to get my solar rack assembled, but it kind of depends on how long it takes this paint to dry. I noticed the last time around, it actually took you know longer than I thought, and it was still kind of tacky and sticky even after a couple of days. I don't know if that's because the paint is at least three years old or what, or just the weather, or the fact it's going on pressure treated wood. I'm not sure about that, but it was a little tacky before. I don't mind assembling it tacky, but obviously I don't want to get paint all over me. So I'm going to let this dry. Well, I did that once. I let it dry on one side. Then I went and made some bacon and eggs with shredded cheese on it. And now uh, I came back out and just did this side. So I'm going to let that set up. And in the meantime, I just want to share with you 
trying to be steady and smooth and not, you know, make you dizzy here. But uh, I did do a wrap up conclusion video yesterday. Pardon the mess going on here. It's really starting to kick in good. That fluorosil cream I'm putting on my nose to get rid of precancerous stuff. But this looks a lot better, my quad. So I got my wheels on, I got this basket installed. I got the racks underneath it painted. I just spray painted them black. I painted this rear rack and put that back on. Um, I've got the material here for the seat to cover this seat. It'll look a little, let's see. Now yeah, you get the idea. It's going to be a black seat like that. I had to order a pneumatic staple gun though, which came in the mail, just a cheapo $20, $25 one off of Amazon. Pretty much the cheapest one I could find. Uh, but the stainless steel staples that I need to use, where is it? Here it is. The stainless steel staples that they say you should use did not come in. This little pneumax thingy. I haven't opened it yet, but you know, you get the idea. It's just a just a little pneumatic staple gun. So as soon as the staples come in, I'll take the seat off. I'm just gonna leave the orange, the faded orange on there since it's not cracked, shockingly. I mean, after 20 years, what are the chances that a faded seat on an ATV has no cracks or tears? That's pretty amazing. Um, so I think I'm just gonna leave that on there and just wrap the new around it, staple it on. And then uh, aside from putting a new rear metal basket on the back to hold, you know, five gallon buckets in, in gear, that's pretty much it for the ATV project. I do need to drain the oil and put some new oil in it, but that's only about a 15 minute task. And then it's pretty much ready to go. So I'm making progress. Um, that was super, super frustrating work yesterday because of all the little plastic rivet things that hold the panels on, you know, getting those out and um, off and trying to reuse them with those being 20 years old is difficult. I got a boo-boo on the tip of my thumb from jamming a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver into it, and numerous other cuts and bruises and scrapes and abrasions on my hands. Um, it was hot, it was humid, it was frustrating, but I got it done, so I'm happy about that. And you know, looking at my background, that reminds me, as I'm building out my workshop and as I'm building out my main house, I'm going to specifically plan for um, backdrops that are pleasant to look at. So future YouTube videos, I mean, that could be quite a ways away, a year from now, but some future YouTube videos will have a little more pleasant backdrop than just this raw, you know, metal shop. <laughs> so that's on my mind. Anyway, um, I'm going to move to the next phase, which is, I don't know what, but I'll try to film it if it's interesting. Maybe I'm going to move some dirt around for a little bit. Or no, maybe I'll go out and take what the existing solar rack components and sort of clamp them together and figure out the spacing because the way the solar panels slide in, I only have about a half inch of play with the rails, the spacing of the rails. So I got to get that right before I start tacking things down. And I think I'm at a phase where I can do that. And the sun is not yet brutal today. It's relatively overcast. So I think I'm going to go out and mess with that a little bit. All right. Just wanted to show you, it's only been about 15 minutes since the last clip, but here is me trying to tack this thing together. I've got to get the distance between the top post and the bottom post right. I've got it roughly there, and I use these clamps in all four corners to keep the whole thing from racking. Now I'm going to take this 10 foot wide piece and mount it up top. Um, tack it in place. Those are the grooves that basically hold the solar panels. And once that there, I can pull a measurement between here and there and make sure that the solar panel, you know, they're the right distance apart and parallel. So I can just slide the solar panels in like that. So that's the idea. All right, guys, I'm making progress on this rack. I'm starting to put in these cross pieces here, one on each end, two in the center. I got a solar rack in there just to help with the spacing between the top and the bottom sections. Now that the spacing's good, I basically just have to go around, brace it all up, bolt it all together, lots of deck screws, um, but I've got the basic shape. So you can see it's a lot like the others over here, just not quite as tall. 
Hard to tell, but it's about a foot and a half lower to the ground, a little lighter weight. It's only 74 degrees out here, which is crazy cool for, you know, late August, but it's 65% humidity, so I'm still sweating like a pig, but it's, it's nice out here and overcast. I still have to wear this though because of the floor sill on my nose. It feels stingy like a sunburn and it's more susceptible to sunburn. So even though the sun isn't beating down on me, you know, UV rays still, still abound. And the FedEx guy just showed up with the rear basket for the ATV. So at some point I'll take a break from the wood here and I'll go in and uh, mount the basket on the quad and show you what that looks like. But maybe another hour on this and it'll be pretty close. I'll have to uh, spend a few minutes painting some, you know, cut ends and some spots that I didn't get with the pre-painting, but making good progress. So hopefully it's only a half day project uh, and not a full day. All right. So I'm going to cool off, have a little lunch, crack this big old box right here and install that rack on the ATV. All right, boys and girls, it's Sunday morning. I've been doing a little work. It's comfortable temperature, but super humid again today. Stanley getting the truck. How do I start? He was in my truck. I start talking, he jumps out of the truck. All right, here's my new solar rack. A little shorter, a little closer to the ground. I took two panels. Well, let's see. I had six between these two racks. Two of the panels from the new rack are brought into that series. So that'll be a series of eight. And then on these two racks, also six panels, I'm gonna bring in one panel from over there and make it a series of seven. And hopefully that works. But I don't have enough um, solar wire. I don't know what you call it, cable? Sorry about wind noise. Come on, Stanley. Right now. Stanley. Next to get in the truck. Truck. In the truck. There we go. Loves being in the back seat of my truck. Anyway, I don't have enough cable to make the run, but fortunately I found some leftover, a spool of solar wire. These are the things I was missing, these little crimper hoo-hoo dealies. Uh, and these. And a set of crimpers. So I'm essentially about to make me some solar wires that are long enough. And look how chaotic this workbench is. Totally unacceptable. That's on my list to fix. After I do this project and do some landscaping, I think tonight my goal is to come in and clean up this area. Because not only is my workbench chaos, but my tool room is also complete chaos. Shit everywhere, I can barely get in there. But that's how it is when you have 30 projects going at once. So anyway, it's a beautiful Sunday. I'm gonna try to work just hard enough to feel like I accomplished something. All right, boys and girls, I think that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to wrap it up. I got my solar rack done and hooked up. I created some 20 foot long section of wires, including a little bit extra cable here so I can move these around relative to each other without the wires getting um, caught up. But essentially, there's the new one. So I got two panels on one array, one panel on the other array. I checked it all, it's working. My making three new cables is done. And I pretty much, except for my seat change or improvement, because um, the staples aren't here yet, um, I've got everything else done. Sorry about the wind noise. I got everything else done on my ATV. So it looks a lot better. I got the front rack, I got the back rack on here. I got the new tires. I spray painted some things. I got these mud guard things that go right here on the, uh, oops, drop my shades. Got these added on, and then I got new splash guards that go in front of the feet down here. Hopefully you can see that. Anyway, make sure you like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. One final note. I had a chat with my mom this morning. She asked if Hurricane Hillary, which is hitting San Diego tomorrow, is affecting me. And I said, nah, not really. You know, it's cool and overcast yesterday. But I take it back because today, man, we are getting some winds. It's blowing about 30 miles an hour, and I don't know if you can see that. But that's an, uh, an arm, the northern arm of Hillary coming over Mexico. I can tell by the curvature. I can tell by the direction of the wind. It's blowing. Oh, it's strong enough wind that's pushing me around physically. So it's nice compared to yesterday, which was too still. So I'm out here working in it and it is cooling me off, but it's blowing dirt into my eyes. It's just blowing hard. So it's better than still air, but 
I wasn't expecting to get winds from it this far to the east because it's going to pass between San Diego and Yuma and we still got 250 300 miles between me and Yuma something like that but surprisingly yeah super windy today just thought I would share that